Hello everybody and welcome to The British Pint. My name is Christoph and I just quickly changed my editing schedule to, um, to insert this brew into my pipeline. That is a recipe that I was made aware of yesterday and I think it's really important because it concerns current events and has quite an actuality. So the beer I want to brew today and show you how I brew it is the Solidarity Brew by the campaign Drinkers for Ukraine where they are um, calling for breweries to brew a certain beer, which is in this case called anti-imperial stout, compared to the normal Russian imperial stout that you might know, and to donate any pr proceeds to uh, a, a good cause towards Ukraine. So, of course, my channel doesn't make any money, I don't sell any of my beers, so this will be a non-monetarian um, thing, but I want to raise awareness for the conflict, um, the invasion, I should say, and I do want to, um, to just raise awareness that if you find a brewery nearby that actually makes this beer and sells it, that you go and have a pint of that. So what kind of beer is this? As I said, it is supposedly something like an Imperial Stout. Um, there will be some Ukrainian adaptations and also I will change the recipe slightly so that it suits the things that I actually wanted to brew today. Um, the grain bill is 50% pale malt. 14% Vienna malt, which I don't have here at the moment, so I'm going to do 64% um, pale ale malt. Then 11% flaked oats. I had some flaked oats, but not enough, so I went for buckwheat as well. Flaked oats is um, basically lots of lipids and proteins, and buckwheat is very similar in flavor, but slightly less proteins and a lot less lipids, so it doesn't destroy the form as much. Will be a bit, a bit different in the mouthfeel, but not much. The pale malt that I use is the Thomas Fawcett pale ale malt that I still have here. Then the next ingredient is uh, 60 Lovibond crystal and 120 Lovibond crystal. For that I'm using some of the crystal malts that YouTube user Waymay, thank you very much, gave me a few weeks ago. So I have the, which one is which? The extra pale crystal, which is 113 EBC. Crisp has a very strange naming system, so don't get confused with the names. 113 EBC from Crisp and 270, I think that's the normal crystal malt, but it's 270 EBC. This is very similar to Special B, for example. So these are my two crystal malts. They are 7% each uh, of the grain bill. Then I have another 7% of de-bittered or de-husked black malt. For that, I'm going to use uh, black wheat malt because I have that here and that also doesn't have husks. I think that is the closest I can get. And then also they want you to use 4% of chocolate malt. For that, I'm going to use Carafa 2, the German version. And um, that would be pretty much it with the grain bill. Now to get to a certain alcohol percentage, which you are free to choose, I'm going to go for 6 to 6.5% alcohol by the grain. So I want to get to 1060 to 1065 degrees gravity or 15 to 16 um, degree plateau. Uh, so that's the calculation for the grains. I'm going with 1100 grams of malt for my 4.5 liters, the UK gallon that I always do. And then I adjusted everything, calculated everything. I will show you the vid uh, video of how the grain looks in total. I already mashed this in behind me. This is currently at 66.0 degrees Celsius. So it's mashing there for an hour. They don't specify the mesh schedule here. Then to get to higher ABV, which uh, they are recommending, I'm using sugar, as they say. The sugar I'm using is the number two invert sugar that I made myself, 60 EBC roughly, and I'm going to use 100 grams, which gives me 2.5% sugar. So that is basically um, 10 degrees gravity extra. So from 1060, I go to 1070. And then this, of course, is more fermentable than it would uh, than malt would be. So it's more than just 1%. I think it's 1.5, 1.25% of alcohol that I gain with that. I think it, in total, I will be roughly around 7.5% ABV. That is the game in here. Then for hops, they say just any bittering hop neutral at the start of the boil for 45 to 50 IBU. I'm going to use the Admiral that I already used recently in um, ma the making for a barley wine. However, um, last time I miscalculated slightly and got to 110 IBUs. So I'm going to use a calculator to actually get how much uh, exactly I need to get 50 IBUs. Something that I want to stress here that you might not not uh, no, or, or I think not many people uh, consider this. The gravity that you want to put into your IBU calculator is not the gravity after you add sugar, but before, because the sugar doesn't contain any proteins that affect the IBUs. So you want to t measure the gravity at sparge out and calculate um, the, the, the volume of protein you have from there, and then 
calculate your hops and the sugar is completely out of the equation. Only then will you get accurate calculations. So I'm going to measure after sparging and it should be around 6 liters then and then after the boil will be 4.5 liters but sugar added in the last 10 minutes of the boil. Okay, then they say you should use um, any high attenuation British style ale yeast. So this sounds like something that would be suitable for the Nottingham ale, especially because we have quite a complex grain bill. So the Nottingham, which, which has quite thin flavors, isn't, um, yeah, doesn't, doesn't just give you the thin version of the beer, but it actually gives you quite, quite a good beer because there's a lot of different molds in there. Now I'm, because it's winter outside and I really wanted to do some bottom fermenting beers, uh, I'm in the need of using the Imperial Yeast Harvest Lager. I have one of these big bags and I already brewed a beer yesterday that is waiting to get the yeast pitch. So I'm going to do both to pitch both today's with the Imperial Yeast Harvest Lager, which is the same as the Y Yeast 2552 Munich Lager 2, I think. And from White Labs, the same strain would be the White Labs 860, I believe. Not entirely sure how, what that is called. Um, basically, the, the gist is that I'm turning my um, anti-imperial stout into something that would nowadays be called Baltic Porter, which is, of course, an incorrect labeling from the 90s. It should be called something like Polish Porter, which is slightly historical. They have their own Polish name for that, which I forgot to look up. And then, if you want to be actually technically correct, I'm turning my imperial stout into a Schwarzbier Bock. That is the, in my opinion, correct name for this. Okay, so different yeast than what they recommend. I will ferment at roughly 10 degrees. I have a small fridge. I see if my fermenter fits in the fridge and then that would be uh, something I can, I can actually control, which would be very nice. Otherwise, I put it in a room in the cellar, 12, 13, maybe 14 degrees. The um, Imperial Yeast Harvest Lager is quite robust towards fruity esters until 16 degrees. At 16 degrees, it starts to get a fruity flavor, but I, f I find it much more neutral at higher temperatures than other bottom fermenting yeast. So, something Ukrainian needs to get in this beer that is quite essential, and for that they recommend you to use beetroot, which is apparently quite a Ukrainian ingredient. So they add 50 grams per liter beetroot, which for me means 225 grams, half a pound, and then um, I need to peel it, bake it in the oven until the starch turns to sugar, so that will be quite important. I would guess 30 minutes from what I know from parsnips and carrots from my British Sunday roast. 30 minutes, maybe 40. To get really, it, it has to taste sweet, so I will probably try that. And if it tastes sweet, it goes into the main fermentation vessel. They say it goes into the finished beer, but that's I'm, I'm very certain it's not, because afterwards they say in the conical, cylindrical conical fermentation vessel. So I will put it in the, the main fermentation towards the end of the main fermentation and uh, see what happens. I, I have to mash it, of course, a bit, right? Chop it up puree it, something like that. Okay, and then the beer will be pretty much ready, just needs eight weeks of conditioning, I would say. Um, that will be quite a long time, and I do hope that we have something to celebrate then and not uh, something to be sad about, but we will see. So I'm going to upload this video as fast as I can, and we, we will see what it tastes like then, and I will upload the tasting video then, and not as I usually do brewing and tasting videos in one set. Okay, that would be it, and then I would say... Um, Enjoy the clips that I'm going to shoot about the brewing. I will do a few. Not sure how many, but there will be a few. And then, uh, oh yeah, I forgot, forgot to say that. I'm remembering now because I was thinking of will the sparging works. Of course it will work. I have my rice hulls, which are helping me so much. Uh, so amazing. So plenty of rice hulls will go in there um, towards the end of the mashing. That should help my, my grist to stay um, fluffy. Okay, that's it. And I will see you in... Uh, well, in eight weeks for this video, but I have quite a few other videos coming up. The next one should be something where I taste another hop extract, trying to find out what dry hopped um, hops would taste like. And then the next beer that I brew is the Meantime IPA and the Meantime London Porter, both of which I've brewed quite some weeks ago. I already tasted them. They are amazing. Made with the Nottingham yeast, but so tasty. So tune in for that. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.